Hello. All right, we are recording. Welcome to the game that requires really high-end shit to run. Um, you know, you need like really fast CPU, GPU, you know, you need to be able to uh, run all this stuff at like playable frame rates. It's a pain in the ass. I get it, but I'm here to help. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our menu, our little hand menu here. We're going to go to the gear. We're going to go to this thing. And so we pop this out, right? Now, what, what you want to do is you want to go to performance. So once you went to performance, oh, if this is 20 gigs or like you start noticing weird issues or it's around 20 gigs, just hit the clear downloaded cache and just hit yes. And once you restart the game, it'll be clear. Go all the way to the bottom. And this just has to do with your graphics quality. The reason why I brought you guys to this world in particular is this. So we're gonna do a little spin here, if I can. Actually, I'll just do this. All right, so this is on medium. So we're gonna open up that menu again. This is one of the only worlds where you can actually see the difference in like draw distance and all that stuff. Unless they did changes, in which case I'm gonna have to redo this entire video. Um, so let's crank that all the way up to ultra. And I'll do it while looking. It's gonna be a little difficult. I'll try to pull this up a little bit. So we're going from ultra. high, medium, there's no real difference between medium and high, and then low. And there's still no real difference between anything past that. Like ultra gives you a little bit more detail in the distance. It just has to do with draw distance, but you can notice the difference between high, um, if we come up here to the uh, to the FPS VR thing in the upper right corner. Um, so on ultra, we are running at, what is that, 17.6 milliseconds? Um, for GPU frame times, and we're using 7.7 .7 gigabytes of VRAM, 7.8 alone in a world, alone in just, I mean, this is a really heavy world, but now we've dropped that down to ultra, so we went from 17.6, now we go to high, and we're already down to 16.2, so that's a whole millisecond off, and we saved basically no VRAM, sadly. Um, but now, going down again, so now to medium, now we're all the way down to 15.9. So that's two milliseconds. And for people who are running lower end rigs than what I'm running, two milliseconds of a 3080 is a lot. That's a lot. Um, and now once we try low, that's all the way down to 13. And there hasn't really been that much of an issue for visual quality, avatars still look the same. Uh, it's just really, really far distance objects on ultra. And it doesn't really give you that much better visual clarity. Like everything is still crystal clear. It just has to do with the draw distance. So I run at medium just because reasons I could run on low. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference, honestly. Um, like none at all. Yeah, literally no difference. For those of you who are long-term users of VR chat, that low button, uh, remember when you used to hold shift and hit play and you just kept holding shift and that little menu came up and it was like, how do you want your VR quality and like desktop low? And then like, it just like all of a sudden you got like 30% more FPS. That's basically what it is. I do run anti-aliasing times two. It looks a little bit crisper um, without adding too much overhead to the GPU. So 16.4 for times four. 22, 22 milliseconds to run times eight any aliasing in this game. My FPS went from 60 to 40, but if I just go back down to times two, shimmering is still there, except we have 60 FPS. But I do notice way more shards and stuff on zero, especially in the distance objects. There's there's more without any, ali any aliasing. I would recommend still running it. Uh, oh, uh, one more thing. So under performance, all the way at the bottom, I highly recommend using this button here all the way to the right if you run a decent rig. If you're not running a decent rig, don't use this. I have motion smoothing off. If you have this on, turn it off and your life will become so much better because it just causes everything to blur. On Oculus, there's a thing called asynchronous space warp. With asynchronous space warp, um, it, it's there's a couple ways you could turn it off in game, uh, not in game, but like on your desktop. Um, it depends on which way you're using. If you're using AirLink or um, the link cable, then you want to go to your C drive, program files, Oculus support, Oculus diagnostics, and then in there you'll find the Oculus debug tool. It's the top one, um, and from there you just 
turn it from auto to disabled. There's another way you can do it, but that's the easy way and just pin it to your taskbar down here. And then you can just open it up and click it to disabled because it does want to reset itself all the time. Once you try it without it, it can make the difference between 45 FPS and 80 FPS. So let's say you're running at 80 Hertz on the Oculus Quest 2 and you can only hit 75. So instead of being like, oh no, five of those frames are stuttery, let's just drop you down to 40, and that way it's stable. But they blur every single image together. So it's like, would you like a few tiny little stutters every once in a while, or would you prefer it to blur the hell out of your display? It will affect you in things like Beat Saber. It will affect you in things like Pavlov. It just makes fast paced games and just general, like it makes me sick to have it on. It's very similar to the motion smoothing, wherever the frick it is, right uh, there for index users. If you're running through Oculus and you wanna run VR smoother, um, my best pro tip, if you have a decent router or you have one of those new things that like plugs into your uh, computer, like USB port and then like automatically connects to the uh, Quest, um, just something where it's a direct line, not very much lag. If you already use Airlink, um, you can either buy virtual desktop, um, which is the easiest way and just run through virtual desktop instead. Basically the reason for that is because it runs both the Oculus and the Steam VR runtime on top of each other if you don't. So like it, it, it helps make, it could be the difference between VR working and not working. Um, it's worth the 20 bucks to try it out if you have really shitty performance and you aren't already doing that. Um, anyway, continuing on with my settings. So let's go to general and I'll just show you all my settings here. So the reason why I do these things is because 144, wherever the hell it is, 144 hertz is technically an experimental feature. I have known people whose headsets just died. I don't recommend running at 144. You're not gonna notice the difference. If you notice the difference and you got tons of cash, go for it, I don't care, not my money. Um, I run at 120 because I know it works. It works great. It doesn't get hot, it's fine. I run it a little bit lower brightness just to try to save heat, uh, especially if you live in a hotter climate, I highly recommend lowering this a little bit. Um, motion smoothing, I have that off. That's because it causes that blur. Render resolution, always, always, always set it to custom. Choose your own resolution because Steam VR just decides what you have. Don't let it do that. It's not, it's not as good as it likes to think it is. Um, usually the line will be, so like on here, the line will be what it recommends. But I have a 3080. For lower end systems, like a 3060 might still have it set at 150. I turn notifications off because there's nothing worse than having VR come up and you're just like in VR having a good time and it just says, so and so is playing Raid Shadow Legends. I don't want to fucking know that. I don't care at all. Anyway, um, Steam VR always on top. Leave that on. Pause VR when computer is locked. I just leave that on. It's fine. Steam VR Home though, turn that off. That is known to cause tons of stutters. You can basically skip the next couple settings here. Um, just go to video next, and then you get a couple more options here because this is all the same stuff as before. So I set mine to 150, but like if you're running like. Uh, 1080, um, 2060 level, maybe run it like 100 to 120. If you're running something like a 960 or something really like like older, like a 1060, some, something that's like lower end, it's like decent, but like it can't really run it too well, maybe try like 80% and you might notice a much better, um, you know, frame rate, especially if you're still on auto because auto is going to screw you over every single time. Anyway, so next thing up we have, is you wanna to go to the advanced super sampling filtering. It doesn't really matter if you have this on or off too much. Um, I use DSR factors when I over render. If you don't use DSR factors, maybe leave this on. Um, that's just personal preference here. You can see if it makes a difference for you. Everyone's eyes are a little different. Overlay render quality. If you are not running a Vario, keep this on medium. There is literally no reason to leave it at high. HDCP. 1.4 legacy compatibility. This is for index users. Only leave this off. You will have a very bad time if you turn this on. Now, DisplayPort training, only do this. The quick pro tip here. If you ever have connectivity issues with your index, try this. Try different DisplayPort trainings. Yes, you'll have to restart, you know, but if you can't get a fucking display out, if you do a dis different DisplayPort training mode, you might be able to get a display back at least long enough to get a new cable um, because these cables, freaking, you know, 140 bucks of 
trash. So that's pretty much it for Steam VR settings. If you don't want to buy FPS VR, which is this program right here, um, it literally will show up on your wrist in VR. It is a lovely program. I am not sponsored by them. Please sponsor me. I've been fucking slinging your product for years. <laughs> um, but like, you can check to see like what's happening with my system. Like, is it like a GPU temp issue? Is it uh, am I running out of like uh, VRAM? Am I running out of RAM? Am I my CPU's freaking out? What's happening? If you don't want to buy FPS VR, you can look at these frame times still. So you don't have to look in FPS VR. It is just way more convenient to diagnose your VR bottleneck because literally all the information is right there and it'll be right on your hand or wherever you want it in VR. We don't want to do display performance graph because that's just going to show you the GPU. We don't want that. We want the whole shebang. So go to developer, go to advanced frame timing. I think I went over pretty much everything. If you guys want my stupid windows optimization guide, um, how like running just stock windows is using like nothing. So like if you only have eight gigs of RAM, you might be interested in the video like that. It, wherever you're at, wherever you're at, take what you got and move on. I'll see you around. Peace.